Alam tara. Do you not see? Anna Allah, that indeed Allah, anzala min as samai ma'an. He has sent down from the sky water. Notice how it is said from the sky. Why not clouds? I mean, rain falls down from the clouds, doesn't it? Doesn't it? So why sama? Why is sama mentioned? Because where are the clouds? In the sky. Right? Rain comes from the direction of the sky, meaning from up above. That's where the clouds are. And if you think about it, have you ever seen clouds up in the sky but there's no rain? Doesn't it happen? I mean, just because there are clouds in the sky, that doesn't mean that there will be rain. A lot of things have to happen in the sama so that rain can fall from the clouds. Correct? So, anzala mina samai ma'an. Rain is, is a result of what happens in the sky. Not just from the cloud. So, anzala mina samai ma'an. Fasalakahu, then he makes it flow. He makes it enter. Meaning the rain water. Salaka from the root letter seen lam kaf. And salaka is to enter a path and proceed. Like for example, you see lots of cars driving. And then there is a particular exit. And they take the exit and they carry on on that road. This is salaka. Understand? Salaka. There's a whole lot of water puddled somewhere. And then on the side is a stream. So what happens? The water from the puddle, it goes into the stream. Salaka. Okay. So the water comes down from the sky and then Allah makes it enter into yanabi'a, into springs. Fil ardi in the earth. Yanabir is a plural of yambur, noon, ba'ain, naba'a. Naba'a is when water gushes out. And yambur is used for a spring. Because what is a spring? It's a crack or a hole or something like that in the ground or somewhere between rocks from which water is coming out. Now where did that water come from? Where did it come from? From somewhere in the ground. But where did the water come from in the ground? It's the rainwater that was absorbed. Right? So, Yanabir is a plural of Yambur, and Yambur is a spring. Okay? So, as the water infiltrates the earth's surface, it becomes part of the area groundwater. Right? And the area groundwater, as it increases in volume, it then travels through a network of cracks and fissures, and eventually emerges in the form of springs. So فَسَلَكَهُ يَنَابِيعَ فِي الْأَرْضِ ثُمَّ يُخْرِجُ بِهِ And this water, I was watching a video about this, this water is naturally filtered. Spring water is naturally filtered water. Because it goes through layers of soil, right? And then eventually it comes out. It's naturally filtered water. ثُمَّ يُخْرِجُ بِهِ From this water, Allah causes to grow because of it. زَرْعًا crop. Zayra'in. Look at where the water came from. Somewhere from the sky. So much happened in the sky. Water fell down. Absorbed by the earth. Came out as spring water. And sometimes springs also form lakes. And huge lake. And then from that, what's happening? So much crop. So much vegetation. And zar is specifically used for crop, meaning that which people consume, which they eat. مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهُ Different in its colors. Of varying colors. If you think about it, which two leaves are exactly the same color? They're not. And when it comes to crop, when it comes to produce, that which people eat, just go to a grocery store and you'll see a rainbow of colors. It's amazing. مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهُ But then, summa then يَهِيجُ It withers. It dries up. Yahiju ha ya jim. Ha ija. Ha ija is grass which is dried and withered. Dried and withered. Yaj from the same root is used for that which is agitated and stirred up. Agitated. Because when grass is fresh, it's green, it's straight. But as it dries up, even if somebody sat on it, if an animal walked by, you know, on it, then it just looks so messy. So, yahiju is when plants naturally dry out and wither. Why are they withered? Why have they dried out? Because time's up. Understand? Time's up. 
if you get beautiful tulips, okay, and you put them in a vase, you keep them so that they get enough sunlight, they get their water, you even put that plant food in it, whatever that is, right? What will happen after a week? What will happen after a week or two? They'll die. Why? Because time is, time is up. Your time's not up. Tulip's time is up. We still have some time, so stay awake. Okay? With the weather change, what happens to crop? Does it change color? Yes. ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ It dries up. فَتَرَاهُ So you see it مُصْفَرًا The whole crop turns yellow. It's amazing. In spring, in summer, you see so many different colors. One tree is purple, reddish almost. Another is green. Another is light green. Another is dark green. But then what happens in fall, in winter? Everything turns yellowish brown, dead. مُصْفَرًا مُصْفَر is used for that which has turned yellow. ثُمَّ then يَجْعَلُهُ He makes it حُطَامًا حَطَى mean broken pieces, debris. حَطَم is to crush, smash, break and crumble something. So ثُمَّ يَجْعَلُهُ حُطَامًا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرًا لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, and that is a reminder for those of understanding. What's the lesson over here? Rain falls down, springs, fresh water, filtered water, and then the crop that grows from it, different colors, different varieties, and then with time, they wither, they dry up, all of them turn yellowish, brown, hopalman. At the end, crumbled debris. What's the lesson? What's the dhikra in this? Every peak has a, has a decline, has a fall. So do our lives. This is how this world is. Nothing is permanent in this world. The most beautiful tree, the most beautiful flower also, eventually droops and dies. Right? Youth also, it goes away. In Surah Al-Kahf also we're given this example. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَاءٍ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Once an Ansari man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, أَيُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَفْقَلْ which of the believers is best? Which believer is the best? And the Prophet ﷺ said, أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا The best of them in character. Not أَحْسَنُهُمْ خَلْقًا We think the best person is the one who has the best looks. No. It's the one who has the best character. And that man asked, فَأَيُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَكْيَسْ Which person is the most intelligent? And the Prophet ﷺ said, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لِلْمَوْتِ ذِكْرًا Those who remember death most. Those who remember death most. And وَأَحْسَنُهُمْ لِمَا بَعْدَهُ إِسْتِعْدَادًا And those who are best in preparing for what is after death, for after life. أُولَئِكَ الْأَكْيَاسِ Those are the wisest. Those are the most intelligent. So, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى For who? لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ Because you see, once, when you remember death, when you remember that life is short, it's temporary, and you know that this is the only chance you have, you're not going to have another opportunity to come and try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, earn His pleasure. This is the chance you have. This is the time of youth you have. You're not going to 16 again, or 17 again. This is the only time when you will get to live as a 16-year-old, as a 17-year-old, as a 20-year-old, as a 25-year-old. This is that time. Your only time. And what happens is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes easy. And you don't look at yourself as, oh, I'm only sweet 16. No, you think of it as, this is my chance, as this is the only one time in life when I can be 16. This is my only time in life when I can be of this age. So I better make the most of it. I better earn Allah's pleasure through it. Because life is not forever. Afaman Is then who? Sharah Allah. Allah has expanded. Sadrahu. His chest. Lil Islam for Islam. You see, in the surah, so many questions. Right? Afaman. Amman. So many questions and you'll notice the answers are not given because the answers are implied. 
So, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Think about it. The person whose chest Allah has expanded for Islam. Remember the word sharaha. I showed you a video a long time ago. Sharh is to, what does it mean? To cut open meat. Not as in to cut it to pieces, but to cut it open. Right? Meaning it was closed, it was tight, and then you slit it, cut it open, and you spread it so that it expands. It expands. This is sharh. So sharh Allah sadrahu. His heart, his chest was narrow, closed. Allah opened it, expanded it, broadened it for Islam. So a person is able to understand it and accept it wholeheartedly and live by it. This is sharh al-sadr. There's room for Islam. Because otherwise what happens? A person thinks, there's no way I can pray five times a day. There's no way I can wear the hijab. There's no way I could do this. There's no way I could do that. But once a person's heart is open for Islam, then everything becomes easy. Gradually, gradually, things become easy. So, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ So he is عَلَى نُورٍ مِّن رَبِّهِ Upon light from his Lord. What does it mean by this? That because of Islam... Now he's upon a light as in guidance, knowledge, clarity. Clarity of vision. Because where there's light, you can see things as they actually are. In darkness, you can't tell between things. You cannot even tell the color of the things that are in front of you. So, فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِّن رَبِّهِ He has nur from his Lord. Meaning he has guidance. He has knowledge. He has clarity. He can see things for what they really are. He's not deceived by this world anymore. This is who? The person whose chest is opened up for Islam. The person who's wholeheartedly accepted Islam. Is he better? Or the one who is otherwise, whose heart is closed and is in darkness? Who's better? Man sharaha Allahu sadrahu lil Islam. Fawailun. Then woe. Destruction. For who? لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ For those whose hearts are hard. مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Against the remembrance of Allah. الْقَاسِيَةِ قَاف سِينْ وَاو قَسْوَة What does قَسْوَة mean? Hardness. Remember, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ So قَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts are hard. مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Against the dhikr of Allah. Spring water also. Right? I mentioned to you earlier that when water infiltrates the surface of the earth, it's absorbed. It should keep going down technically, but it reaches a point where the rock is impermeable. Right? It's impermeable. It's not possible for the water to go any deeper. So what happens, it begins to collect over there. But then, obviously, water is going to move. It's not going to stay in one place. So then it begins to come out of, you know, uh, springs, right? So this is qasiya, impermeable. So, وَيْلٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ What does it mean? Their hearts don't soften for the dhikr of Allah. They don't get soft from the dhikr of Allah, by the dhikr of Allah. So firstly, they refuse to do dhikr of Allah. And if they were to do dhikr of Allah, they wouldn't benefit from it. And what is the dhikr of Allah? It's the Qur'an or Allah's remembrance. Unaffected. Unaffected. أُولَٰئِكَ فِي ضَلَالٍ mubin. Those are in manifest error. Two types of people. One is enlightened by the Qur'an. And the other is hardened to the Qur'an. One is a person whose heart expands relaxes with the Qur'an. The distress, you know, the worries that he has in his life, they depart. Solutions, they come to him. Heart is filled with happiness, joy, contentment. And the other, قَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ The heart feels even more distressed by the Qur'an. In Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 125, Allah says, وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَتُمْ رِجْسًا إِلَى رِجْسِي That those in whose hearts is a problem, is a disease, and what happens? The more Qur'an they learn, the more diseased they get. 
Because the heart is hard. It's impermeable. It doesn't get affected. Is there a problem with the Qur'an? Not at all. Because Allah, Allah is the one who Nazzala, He has sat down Ahsan al-Hadith, the best speech. The best of all speeches is the speech that Allah has sent down. And what is that? The Qur'an. How is it the best? What is good speech? Good speech is that which is good in its content, in its style, in its themes, in its relevance, in its benefit. Any other thing you can think of? What is a good speech? A good book. Relatable. Right? So, the Qur'an is Ahsan al-Hadith. It's the best speech. And you see, there could be, for example, the best, you know, a really good lecture, content-wise, for example. A really good book, content-wise, written by a nobody. Meaning, their name is not well known. But then there is a big name, right? a big personality. And they give a talk, which content-wise may not be that great at that time. I'm not saying they're always like that, just at that moment, at that time. Content-wise, not that heavy, not that great. But what is it that people will be more drawn to? The content or the speaker? The author. It's the author, the speaker. Isn't it? So good speech, meaning a speech is good, also, when you look at who the author is, when you look at who the speaker is. So Qur'an is Ahsan al-Hadith because whose speech is it? Whose speech is it? Whose kitab is it? It's the speech of Allah. It's the book of Allah. So it has to be the best speech. There could be no other speech better than the Qur'an. Kitaban, it's a book. A book that is mutashabihan. Mutashabihan. This could be translated in many ways, but one translation or interpretation could be consistent. Mutashabih, one that resembles. Okay? From Sheen Baha. Mutashabih has various meanings. Of the meanings of the word tashabu is when something resembles another. When something resembles another. So Quran is a book whose one part resembles Another part. It resembles another part. What does it mean? There is similarity, there is repetition in the words of the Qur'an and also the meanings. You see themes being repeated, concepts being repeated. Right? Or words or phrases being repeated. Right? So, mutashabihan. Mutashabih, as in one part resembles the other. And if you think about it, once you've learned even one part of the Qur'an, and you hear recitation of the Qur'an from another surah, from, a, from another part that you haven't studied yet, can you recognize it as Qur'an? Of course you can. Right? Because it's kitabun mutashabihan. So it is consistent. Mathani. Mathani, meaning in it is reiteration, repetition. Mathani from the root letters tha noon ya. And the word mathani is said to be the plural of the word mathna. And some have said the word mathani is not a plural, but others have said that it is plural of the word mathna. Mathna, mathna wa thulatha wa ruba. Remember the word mathna? What does mathna mean? Two, in twos. Right? Or two at a time. Like for example, it is said ja'u mathna. They came in twos. Two at a time. Alright? Likewise it is said, Salatu Layli Mathna Mathna. The night prayer is Mathna Mathna. What does it mean? You pray it in two two. Two units. Meaning in tahajjud you don't pray four rakah. Right? You do two. Two and two separately. Alright? This is the word mathna. Now mathna it signifies doubling something. Okay? What does it signify? Doubling something. So for example, the knee of a horse, the knee of a horse is also called mathna. Why? Because when a horse will sit, the leg will be divided in two parts. You understand? Straight leg, but from the point of the knee, it's divided into two parts. You get it? So mathna gives the meaning of folding something. 
Tathnia. What does Tathnia mean? Tathnia means three. No. Two. Alright? And from this, the word is also used for the Quran. Repetition. Because you say something once, you say it a second time. Why are you saying it a second time? For repetition. Alright? So all this detail to tell you that the word Mathani, what does it mean? That in the Quran, the concepts are mentioned in pairs. Where reward is mentioned, punishment is mentioned. Right? Where halal is mentioned, haram is mentioned. Where the do's are mentioned, the don'ts are mentioned. So that's one meaning of mathani. Another meaning of mathani is simply that in the Quran there is repetition. And this is true. You don't just find, for example, the command to worship Allah alone only once in the Quran. You will find it over and over again in the Quran. The matter of halal and haram, it's not just mentioned in one place. It's mentioned over and over again. Look at the verses of hijab. Are they mentioned only once? Twice. There is repetition. Salah. How often is it mentioned? So many times. Zakat. So many times. Right? Repetition. And then thirdly, another meaning of mathani is that this kitab is a kitab that is mathani, meaning it is meant to be repeated. Meaning its recitation is meant to be repeated. The goal is not just to do one khatmul Qur'an and khatam. No. What is it? You do khatmul Qur'an and then you start again. And you start again. But what do we think? Start the recitation of the Qur'an when you're three years old? When you're seven years old, you have a big ameen? And that's it. At, at the age of 15, somebody asks you, have you read the Qur'an? Yes, I had my ameen at the age of seven. Well, after that, no, I did it. No, the Qur'an is meant to be? Is meant to be? Mathani, meaning its recitation is to be repeated. Kitaban mutashabihan, mathani. And this kitab, because it is consistent, it is coherent, and because its concepts are mentioned repeatedly, and because there is beautiful balance in the Qur'an, what happens? It becomes easy to understand. Isn't it? It becomes easy to understand because the concepts are repeated. It's almost like you're reading something and you know what to expect next. For instance, if there is punishment mentioned, you know that there's verses of reward coming. Isn't it? Where, where prohibitions are mentioned, you know, you begin to expect some commands also. So, mathani, taqshairu, taqshairu, it shivers, it contracts. Min who, because of it, meaning because of its recitation, what shivers? Juludu, skins. Of who? Alladina yakshawna rabbahum. Those people who fear their Lord. Not everybody. Only those who fear their Lord. When they hear the Quran, what happens to their julud? They shiver. Julud is a plural of jild. And what is jild? Your skin. And Taqshairu from the root letters Qaf, Sheen, Ayn, Qash'ara. Qash'ara is to contract, to tighten. To tighten, to contract. Iqsha'ara is also used for skin when it dries up. You know what I'm talking about? Winter? When your skin dries up, does it feel tight? Very tight. When your lips are dry, do they feel tight? Yes, they feel very tight. This is when skin becomes dried up or earth becomes dried up so that it becomes very dusty. Right? Year of drought. Right? So from this, what does it mean? That their skins contract, shiver, shudder. Why? Because they're cold? No. Because of awe. Because of fear. Those who fear their Lord, when they hear the Qur'an, their skins feel it. They feel it all over their skin. As if they get shivers, they get chills. They get chills. Knowing this is how my Lord is, this is how forgiving He is, this is what He has promised, this is how well He knows me. تَقْشَعِرُّ مِنْهُ جُلُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ ثُمَّ دَنْ 
تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ Their skins تَلِينُ Relax. Not just their skins, but also وَقُلُوبُهُمْ And their hearts also relax. تَلِينُ لَامْ يَانُونَ Lean is softness, tenderness. إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ At the remembrance of Allah. They get chills. They get afraid. And then their hearts also become soft. Why? At the remembrance of Allah, meaning at the mention of His mercy. Because there is this beautiful balance in the Qur'an. When you hear verses of punishment, frightens you. ذَلِكَ يُخَوِّفُ اللَّهُ بِهِ عِبَادًا But then as you read on, there's verses that give so much hope that your heart relaxes. إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Because أَلَى بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ ذَلِكَ هُدَى اللَّهِ That is the guidance of Allah. يَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ He guides through it whomever He wills. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلِ اللَّهِ And the one whom Allah sends astray, person who is not affected by the Qur'an, فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادِ Then there is no guide for him. What do we see in this ayah? The effect of the Qur'an. On who? On people of knowledge. On people who have fear of Allah. Their hearts are gripped with awe. Their skins shiver. And when the verses of mercy are mentioned, they're relaxed. There is calm and tranquility. What do we see? The Qur'an instills fear and hope. Because taqshairu refers to fear. And talinu refers to hope. When is it that you become all tight? When you're scared. And when is it that you become relaxed? You're happy. You're hopeful. And this is what Qur'an does. It instills fear and hope. Qatada, he said about this ayah, he recited this ayah and he said, this is the characteristic of the awliya of Allah. May Allah make us amongst them. This is the characteristic of who? The friends of Allah. Allah has described them in this manner, saying that their skin shivers, their eyes weep, and their hearts find rest at the remembrance of Allah. In Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 2, Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts tremble. In Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah 73, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا الصُّمَّنْ وَعُمْيَانًا When they hear the verses of their Lord, they do not fall as deaf and blind. No, they're affected. They understand, they're affected. They're moved. And they feel it on their skin. And this is what brings true change in their actions. If we want to see, if we're truly afraid of Allah, then let's observe ourselves when we listen to the recitation of the Qur'an. Because the sign of الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ is that they're affected by the recitation of the Qur'an. Inshallah we'll conclude here. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.